Interview area for the U.S. Women's Open presented by ProMedica. We are joined by world number three, Lydia Ko. Lydia, you have had an unbelievable season, haven't finished outside of the top 25. How does your game feel right now, and um, what's your mindset coming into this week? Yeah, um, obviously I started off my season uh, well, winning the second tournament of the year, and I think that was the earliest win I'd had in a season. Um, I feel like there's been ups and downs. Uh, I you know, still feel like there's a lot of things to work on just to be a little bit more consistent uh, w throughout my game. Uh, but, you know, I don't think anyone ever feels like they're perfect. There's always something that could improve, and even when things are going well. So it's, it's nice to kind of have my attention and focus on the things that I want to work on um, and hopefully the things that I was able to will be uh will work uh this week we're back at pine needles for the fourth time some unbelievable champions crowned here already have you had a chance to see the course and what's your impression of it yeah um i've already played a couple of times out there it's it's nice it i mean it's so close to pinehurst but i feel like it's different to pinehurst at the same time um now it's got some holes that kind of reminds you of Shoal Creek as well, just kind of the finishing holes. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's just a good mix. I, didn't, I knew that it was going to be a great golf course. Obviously, you hosted so many big championships here. Uh, but I didn't really know what it was going to be like and how my game would have to play around here. But it's fun. I don't think it suits one type of player and not someone that's super long or super short. And um, at the end of the day, especially in... At the U.S. Open, I think you do have to drive it really well. And um, with these greens having a lot of fall-offs, uh, you know, having good ball striking and, you know, giving yourself even 30, 30 to 40 footers for birdies is, is not the end of the world. Um, here on the right, Steve. Yeah, Lydia, I think a lot of people would be surprised given the fact that your finishes have been so good for you to say you've still got to work on consistency. Can you explain that? Yeah, um... You know, even when I finished third or tied third at Palos Verdes, I felt like there were things that I needed to improve on. And, um, yeah, even when you win, you don't feel like – and you had a great week, uh, you know, coming off GameBridge. I knew the things that I wanted to work on in, in the four weeks uh, leading up to the Asia swing as well. And um, I think overall my – I realize that when my ball striking is there, I think it puts a little bit of less pressure on my short game and you know, the results we're able to come with. And um, sometimes the ball striking is great and put the putting's not as good and you know, vice versa. So just trying to get that more polished. And I think that way just it gives like less pressure on the other things. So it's um, more like driving ball driving consistency would be probably my biggest thing um and you know we've been trying to work on that and you know I think the more times you know I keep putting those repetition in you know they're all things that add up and it might not show right away but I know that you know the, all those reps count here to Bethann yeah hi Lydia is Sean here with you this week and and what are you in particular focused on in the next couple of days before round one starts? Uh, Sean's not here um, this week. Um, I saw him last week before flying over here. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think just getting familiar with the golf course, you know, it's mm -hmm. kind of like when people, when you go to your home course or a course that you've played well um, or a course that we always return to, like you become more familiar with it just because you've seen the course enough. And mm -hmm. I think that's why sometimes like, practicing and hitting a lot of balls in the driving range yes like that's you need to do that just to make sure that your game is in the right way trending in the right direction um but at the same time I think just to be able to see the course one more time I think it gets you more familiar with it and when you are in pressured or nervous conditions like everything seems like so like new and like I've played a I think I played Lake Merced once and I got a painting for winning and then I didn't even realize there was a bunker on one hole um, <laughs> and I'd played it so many times. I, I remember calling the tournament director and said, I think they drew an extra bunker that doesn't exist. And the year later, after I went and I was like, oh my God, there is a bunker. And every time the pin's close to there, all I see is don't go in the bunker. So <laughs> it's just things like that, right? Like when you get familiar with it, like, you're just able to take it in rather than it being like feeling like a threat or like 
you know, something that you're worried about. Um, mm. So I think just being out there, just kind of enjoying it, just seeing, okay, these areas are going to be probably the easier places to make up and down from. Um, you know, there is this, but like, even though there's fescue, it's not that bad. So like, I think just feeling more comfortable um, over these next couple of days is good and it's getting pretty warm. So making sure to stay cool and it's, it's another, yes, 72 whole event but at the same time like like as many of our events but it can feel like a lot more mm -hmm. um so just making sure that I'm top of things and you know, just being relaxed and um I have an awesome round one and two pairing uh, mm -hmm. group so I'm really excited for that as well thank you um, we've got one from the WebEx, I believe, coming from New Zealand. Um, with the re recent results of Steve Alker and Ryan Fox, how good is the state of golf in New Zealand right now? Yeah, um, I saw that Steve won last week, um, and then I was watching Foxy's playoff uh, in the dining, like moving my chair to get a better view, and he played amazing. He came, I think, second a few weeks ago as well. Um, so, yeah, it's um, really cool to kind of see the New Zealand flag um, being shown out there. There's one of my former teammates, Julian Alvarez, is also in the field this week, so and we're playing a practice round t together tomorrow, which I'm excited about. And I know there aren't like a lot of Kiwis um, like out, out like playing on the tours, but hopefully there's more and more. And I think as players that are playing, you know, we're trying to be the inspiration and, mo and motivation for more um, Kiwi juniors to take up the game and dream of hopefully playing on the European tour, PGA tour, um, LPGA tour. So. Yeah, it's uh, exciting times for New Zealand. Right here to Andrew. Lydia, players usually say they don't think about the prize money, but tell me, is a $10 million purse enough to get your attention? I mean, it's great. Um, you know, obviously you have to play well uh, to um, be rewarded with that. Uh, you know, with uh, Mike Wan, uh, I think it's, it's super exciting what he's done with Permedica and, you know, raising the bar this high. And, I mean, this is probably the biggest championship, um, the major that probably all players would like to uh, win. And, you know, um, I guess it, like, it all goes up. But, you know, as you can see on the LPGA and even our other majors, uh, the purses keep increasing and it just shows, you know, um, and I think that's right. You know, there's so much talent in the women's um, game, and for it to kind of match that, it's I, it, it's really cool to kind of be a part of that generation of it growing. Um, and I'm excited for it, ha like, well, all these championships, and not only just the purses, but like the hospitality and like the fans growing. It's like it's a really exciting time and exciting things for like women's golf. And I think sometimes tournaments. Like people only just talk about the purse because yes, we are playing for money, but I think it's just so much more than that. And for a lot of these sponsors like ProMedica or AIG, Evian, um, Chevron, which one am I missing? KPMG. <laughs> um, like for them to like believe in women's golf and see woman empowerment, I think is, is awesome. And I know like even the many other um, partnerships we have like with the LPGA tour, it's exciting. And I think as a tour, we're very thankful that they believe in us and they see what I think we see as players. As well. Do you think it might bring in some extra nerves on Sunday for some of the players that haven't won quite as much prize money as you? I don't think so. I don't think anyone's going to have a putt on the 72nd hole to possibly win and go, oh my goodness, if I miss this putt, it's like something, something thousand dollars. I think it's going to be like, oh my goodness, I have this putt to win the US Women's Open or I have this putt to make the cut on, on Friday. So I honestly think when there's just so much on the line, like none of us... I, I can say none of us are gonna think about the money. Like, who you only know about it later. They're like, oh, that costed them forty thousand dollars because Golf Digest said that. You know, <laughs> um, I just I think we're all players and we're here at one of the most prestigious events of the year at one of the biggest major championships, and I think that itself is a win. Um, and sometimes I think purse 
can really get in the way of like what the actual meaning of this event is. And um, I think for all of us that are in the field are just excited to play the Women's Open. Um, and obviously f for us to play uh, for that amount of money, it's, it's, it's an extra bonus. We're going to take another one from the WebEx. When you look back at the start of your career, did self-belief and confidence come easy for you? Um, I think things were, like, people would say, like, it seems so easy. And I think in ways it seemed like it because you just didn't, I just didn't have as much experience. Um, you know, it's kind of like when they say, oh, look at that kid. Like, he's just hold, like, ten, like, five-footers and, like, it's kind of almost because you don't have that experience, like you're um, like in a good way, just innocently just going about and just making sure to just try and get that ball in the hole. And I think the more experience you have, um, you end up seeing a lot of different things and feeling a lot of different emotions that maybe you didn't feel before. But at the same time, I think because of my nine years on tour, like, and, and all those experiences, good and bad, I think I'm able to handle it a lot better. Um, like, when I first came on tour, I wasn't a huge fan of playing in front of fans. Um, I didn't want to hit a bad shot and, like, me hit a bad shot and I'd be, and they're like, ooh, or, like, you, your putt lips and, and everyone's like, ah, uh, like, but now I'm like, hey, it's, you try it. It's, it's not as easy as it looks. Um, and you, you're just able to handle it better because you've just done that. And um, I was actually talking to my boyfriend yesterday and then we, he was like, you, you still get nervous? And I was like, yeah, I get nervous even in the pro-am. Um, so it's, it's still there. And it also he said, well, it must mean that it means a lot to me. So mm. I think it's it, the experiences can be good and bad, but I think mostly really good. And I think I've grown as a golfer and as a person because of all of that. And I realize like sometimes, yeah, when I won so many times earlier on in my career, like it may have seemed easy, but at the same time, I think the level of play right now is just incredible. And I think that's why the year that Jin Young and Nelly had last year was just unbelievable. Like people may have thought that it looked easy because they made it look easy, but it was far from that. Amelia? Coming into a US Open week, a major week, it's easy to have like higher expectations and pressure. And a lot of players talk about the process of combating that expectation. What is that process or what does that mindset look like for you when you're coming into a week where you might feel you have a little higher expectation or some pressure on you? Um, I think there's like a lot of headlines this week. Um, you know, obviously Michelle being one of them uh, is announcing that this will be her last, she'll be retiring after this, obviously before the 23 um, Women's Open at Pebble. Nelly's return, um, Jin Young Ko is world number one. So, Hopefully I'll kind of fly under the radar um, behind all that. And, you know, like I said earlier, I have a really great pairing playing with Jess and Hannah. So I'm excited just for that. And that's just going to make it, I think, a little bit more comforting just to go out there with a couple friends um, and just have fun. And, you know, hopefully I'll play great this week. Um, but just with golf, like you never know, right? One day I feel like I felt good and I know exactly where I'm going and the next day it feels clueless and I think that's the thing like where they say oh did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed like this I feel like game it also exemplifies that um, so I'm just going to enjoy it take it one shot at a time it's a long week and I know I'm going to hit a lot of good shots but then I might also hit some bad shots and making sure to not get too frustrated and just uh, kind of believing in the process and never giving up until the very end. Mm -hmm. And when you do have a week where you're, um, you kind of have the spotlight on you, what, how, how are you able to zone in on your game and your process and not focus on everything else around you? Yeah, to be honest, I think um, it's an exciting week itself. So um, it's going to be, it's actually harder to kind of hear all of the things that are being said. Um, you know, I think for most players, I think everyone's going to put in their 100, 110% um, in their focus and the, and the shots that needs to be executed. So, um, yeah, I think it's 
almost because it is this kind of a week, it can at the same time be a little easier to like not focus on the other things because you're really focused on what you have to do um, and the shot in front of you. Last two questions, Bethann and then Amy. Yes. So uh, another storyline this week, of course, is Annika yes. coming back. And How did I miss that? Go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I, w I was wondering since, you know, you practiced at the same place, if you've seen her grinding away for this and kind of what your expectations are for Annika this week. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, she was practicing so much before the game bridge last year. And I was like, oh, guys. Be careful, the goat's coming out. Um, she's won so many more times than all of us. Um, and uh, yeah, before um, the Women's Open, um, I was home last week and uh, she was there every day um, with Mike, her husband, um, doing coursework, putting work, long game, short game, she's covered it. Um, <laughs> Definitely one to watch out. And she's won here multiple times, right? Yeah. She won the senior um, open, was it a couple years ago? Last year. No, oh, was it I last year? Yeah. It's open here. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I don't think anyone has as many championships as she does in the field, like, for this week. Um, and we all know that she does amazing under pressure and – on all of the above. Um, so yeah, she's definitely been putting in the time um, and it's it's amazing, like when she played Gamebridge, she made the cut there. Um, she almost won the Hilton event at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's um, <laughs> I think really cool uh, to be in the same field as her. I think she changed the game and people that don't necessarily know golf knows the name Annika Sorenstam. Um, and I think she plays, uh, yes, she plays for like herself, but at the same time, I think she plays a lot for her family and her kids. And like mm -hmm. even seeing like last year, like her kids coming out and being excited to see their mom play um, like that, I think is, is so cool. And I think there's just so much meaning to that. And, um, and I'm sure like she's inspired so many of us, she's inspired her kids as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, definitely one to watch out for. <laughs> and which, which hole was the painting of it, like Merced? It was, um, it's, it was recently the ninth, but it was our normally the 18th hole. So okay. when it was the Swinging Skirts event, it was the 18th, the one that went down and up on the dip. And right. there is a bunker like halfway up the green on the left. Um, <laughs> but now it's the ninth hole when we played it for Mediheal. But okay. yeah, I remember calling the tournament director the, at the time, Kevin Hopkins. I was like, they drew an extra bunker that I have. That's it shouldn't be there. And then, and the next, he's like, no, it's there. And the next year I went, and I was like, oh my god, there is a bunker. So things like that. I feel like when you're in the zone, you sometimes don't see it. Um, like all you see is the fairway or your target. And then um, when you see it, then you can't get it out of your mind. Um, and that's all I think when the pins front left don't go in the back bunker. Um, but yeah, it's it's a uh, it's amazing, like, our mind and when we're really focused, like, what draws our attention and in those in pressure conditions, what really comes into our eyes. And I think our eyes plays a huge factor um, while we're out there. Thank you. Last question here. Lydia, to follow up on what you said a few minutes ago about the money just not mattering as much as just getting to compete in this major championship, do you think there's any amount of money in the world that would change your feeling about that? No, yeah, at the end of the day, like, it comes with results, right? Like, none of that matters. Um, none of that matters if your results don't follow. And you know, those are, like, the extra bonuses and perks for us, I think. And, you know, as a athlete and as a female athlete, to be able to play for this kind of money, I think it's not even just for my generation, but for the future generations. Um, and when you see, like, what our founders played for, like, yes, like the cost of living might have been cheaper than now, but still, like, we, I think we're very, um, we should be very grateful, but at the same time, I think there's still a ways to go, and I'm excited where, like, women's golf and golf is trending, um, and at the end of the day, like, yes, the more zeros are better, but, you know, we're all um, professional athletes and trying to play 
you know, well in um, what we do and just having a good time out there and to be able to play for more money doing that is, is a bonus. And um, just for me, like sometimes I, I play with these players and see like how well they play and just like the amount of talent. I feel like it is like the woman's game deserves this. And that's why I said earlier, I think we're very thankful to these partners that really believe in us and see what we see. Um, and hopefully more and more um, of these great partnerships will happen and um, it will just continue to grow in, in many uh, different aspects. Lydia, thanks for your time. Thank you. Good luck this week. Thank you.